And welcome back to Wake Up America. Time now for our financial focus. After the 2008 economic crash, workers were eager to work. But a lack of spending, limited job opportunities, all of that today we have the very opposite issue. So let's bring in our money men, business and market analyst and Newsmax contributor Seth Denson, also America's accountant, accounting professor at Montclair State University, Dan Geltrude. Good morning to you both. Good morning, Rachel. Rachel. Well, things are looking a bit grim. This headline topping social media this morning for sure. The question is, are we heading towards a recession or are we already in one? Dan, I'll start with you. Well, I think that we are heading towards one. And let me just say this. I think it's self-inflicted. We do not have to be going down this path. And the reason that we are is related to economic policy. The real issue that this nation is facing right now is inflation. And why is inflation happening? Because there's a lot of demand, but more importantly, there's not enough supply. The limitation on supply is being primarily caused by people not going back to work. Why are people not going back to work? Because they're comfortable at home. The government has made it so they don't have to work. And therein lies the problem. We are on a beeline to a recession unless something changes, and that has to come from the federal government. Dan, we'll get more into that in a second, but before we do, Seth, that article we were just showing says that there's warning signs of an upcoming recession. What would you say some of those warning signs are? Well, listen, Dan, Dan touched on a number of them. Obviously, inflation is the key signal mm -hmm. that we're seeing right now. And the simplified definition of that is too much money chasing too few things, right? And, and if, until we get the economy rolling again, uh, people back to work, but all of our supply chains online, that's going to be a challenge. The fact that the federal government continues to pour literally billions of dollars a month into our economy through the Fed tells you that okay. there is a problem. Uh, and, and that they're addressing, trying to address the problem, but most of the public is unaware of it. So, you know, the high labor, the low interest rates, the high inflation, uh, and the monetary policy are all indicators there's an issue out there, and if not resolved, man, that wound, it, if it doesn't get healed up, it, it's going to fester and become even worse. And that article talks a lot about people are buying things. Are they just spending more on the same things, or are they actually shopping? It says they're not buying work clothes, the suit. Maybe be dying. And what is that really going to tell us? But Dan, as you mentioned just a moment ago, the federal government loaded people's pockets during COVID lockdowns and now not even rising wages are enough to get back them to work. Like you said, what is it going to take other than the federal government taking action? What is it going to take to get them back to work? Well, I think it's simply that people have to feel a little bit of pain mm. that's going to motivate them to get back to work. If people are home and they're relaxed and everything is fine, then, then it's not going to work. So there has to be some disruption to what's happening right now. Business as usual, based upon the trajectory that we're going in, is not going to work. So unless, again, I say we're going to change policy here, nothing is going to change. And then we are going to go into a recession because inflation will continue to grow, perhaps go into hyperinflation. And the way to solve that problem is dramatic increase in interest rates. And we have saw this back in the 70s. I'm a lot older than you guys. It, back in the 70s, the way inflation was stopped was a huge increase in interest rates, and then we went into a recession. Hey, we can only learn from our past mistakes, right? Now, Seth, you were just talking about inflation. I believe we have a recent poll showing America's, Americans' concern over that very thing. So how do we get it under control? Well, yeah, I mean, listen, interest rates are going to be the caveat uh, that the federal government's going to be able to utilize, the, the, the key, I guess I should say. Uh, but then you got to get the economy going again. you got to get labor force back. I mean, otherwise we're in a situation of what we call stagflation, where we've got massive inflation without a growing economy. Now, micro macroeconomics uh, economists will say that you're not in a recession unless you have two negative quarters of growth. We saw that in 2020. We haven't seen that uh, since. But nonetheless, I think this is the trajectory that we're on. Now, it's critical, though, I think, to mention that in 2008, uh, as we went into the recession, the, the federal government, and more specifically politicians, learned a new way to get around it, and that was to flood the market with money. Again, that doesn't solve the problem. It prolongs it. We must see a market correction. If not, we will see a recession. Now, well, let me say something here, please. Seth. Seth you, Seth, you said we need to get the economy going. Therein lies the problem. The economy 
is going. The economy is fine. We are misreading the tea leaves here. We simply need to get people back to work so that we can start to produce. Demand is there to buy. It's the perfect formula for us to be on the right pace here. But, Dan, I'll disagree a little bit because unless the American worker is back in the workforce, the economy is not at full tilt. It is not going strong. You guys, it's almost as if we should have rechanged the name back to the original Financial Feud from Financial Focus. <laughs> I'm here for it. Hey, I love Dan, but sometimes he, just, he gets, his, he gets his, uh, his facts off just a little bit. He needs a little bit of <laughs> Well, that's why I, we're listen, here. Listen, when I always say this, Seth is right most of the time except when he disagrees with me. And then he's there wrong. You, go. you heard the bells, guys. <laughs> we're out of time, unfortunately. Seth Denton, Dan Geltrude, thank you so much for this morning. Thank, Thank you, you, Rachel. All right, as we head to break, don't forget to download the Newsmax app. You'll never miss an interview like that or many of the stories that we cover right here on Wake Up America. That app is free to download in your app store. We'll be right back.